This is InfoOrbs. It's a fully open source desk display widget I've been developing over the last few months that can do things like show stock prices, show the weather, or just be a snazzy looking clock. And the whole thing is built on the super affordable ESP32 module, which is Wi-Fi connected, which means the possibilities for this thing are pretty much endless. This has been such a fun project to work on. I've learned so much in the few months I've been developing it and the community that's built around it is absolutely incredible and I'm so excited to share it with you. And even better, I've actually built out these super affordable development kits that have everything you need from the PCB to the screens to the ESP32 to build one of these for yourself. Before we dive into it though, brief little intro. My name is Brett. I go by brett.tech here on the internet. I make short form videos on TikTok about tech. I've been doing that for about three years now, but this is actually my first video here on YouTube. So if you like this sort of stuff, please toss me a subscribe, like, comment, all that, because it'll help a lot. With all that aside, let's dive in. First things first, I'm gonna give you a super brief overview just how the device works. Then we're gonna jump into the assembly of the hardware, how to solder this thing up and everything. Then we're gonna dive into all the software and how to flash the ESP32 with the latest version of the software that we have built out for this. There should be timestamps in the video if you wanna to skip to a specific step, as well as a bunch of really useful links down in the description, like the GitHub where you'll find all the code as well as a little bit more documentation on the whole thing. You'll also find the Discord where we have a super helpful community. It's where all the devs for this congregate, as well as where you can find support if you're assembling one of these yourself. And you'll find a link to my store where you can buy one of the development kits that we're gonna be assembling. So a little overview of the device first. The inspiration for this build actually came from Nixie Tube Clocks. If you've ever seen those before, I was really into the idea of those, but they're really, really expensive. And at that same time, I was also really fascinated with these new 1.1 inch round displays that recently came on the market. They're pretty affordable and I was using them in a lot of projects at the time. And after a few long nights of initial prototyping, I came up with this absolute rat's nest of wiring that was manually soldered together, but this was kind of the first iteration of the project. From there, refined the software a little bit further, built out a custom PCB where all the components are soldered to. You'll see the ESP32 here soldered directly to the bottom and then the screen to the top, and also made these really cute little PCB feet that kind of slide on the end there to create a nice little stand for it. I was really proud of how this whole thing worked out. And the last thing you'll notice are these three buttons along the top side of the PCB. This is gonna be the main way that you interact with the orbs. The operation of it is very simple. When you plug it in, it's going to try to automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. Once it does that, you're going to be able to switch between the widgets you have defined by pushing the left and right buttons. That's just going to flip through them. And then the center button is going to interact with the widget in some way. Currently, that does things like change the mode of the widget. For example, on the clock here, it toggles between a 12 and a 24 hour clock. And on the weather here, it's going to toggle between showing you highs and lows. But this can easily be changed widget by widget depending on what we end up developing. So that's the device. Now let's jump into the hardware assembly and how you could build one of these yourself with the development kits that I sell. One final warning before jumping into this, it's really important to understand that this isn't by any means a final product. This is the earliest stage of the development kit. This is really just a whole bunch of parts for you to build this. This is gonna require you solder everything together, flash the firmware yourself, it's really going to be a scrappy process, though we are very proud of where it is at this point. This is still an intermediate level project that you're going to need to all do yourself. Don't expect to be ordering a finished polished project when you get this thing. But with that out of the way, let's get the kit and let's put this bad boy together. So we're here on the bench and we've got our dev kit here. When you open it up, you'll see a box full of all sorts of stuff. The first thing you'll see are these 240 by 240 screens I was talking about, the round displays. Inside, there's also some pins. We'll talk about those in a second. What you'll notice though, is there's actually six screens in the package, even though the project only needs five. I found these things have like a 1% failure rate where they have like a dead pixel or a line down the screen or something from the factory. So I've included an extra one in the box. So you have that to swap out if you need it. And then best case scenario, you have an extra one that you could fiddle around with for the rest of your projects. Next thing you'll see, is the PCB. There's no components on this PCB. You'll see some annotation and everything on here. We'll go over exactly how to solder stuff to this. You'll then see a bag with all sorts of goodies. One of the first things you'll notice is the ESP32 itself. This is a special 38 pin version. It's really narrow and it makes for the PCB able to be a little bit extra smaller. Next, you'll find those PCB feet I was talking about. Then we have two female 19 pin connectors. These are gonna be for the ESP. We'll talk a little bit more about these in a second. We have five seven pin connectors. These are for the screen. You'll find five 90 degree seven pin male pin headers. These are also for the screens. Three push buttons and a USB-C port. We'll talk a little bit about this at the end of the project because there's some asterisks with this thing. 
Now, the last thing you might see in your kit if you added it to your order for an extra $4 is this bad boy. This is a PCB that's meant for you to practice your soldering on. This project has a whole bunch of through-hole soldering that if you're a little bit rusty on your soldering or new to it, I highly recommend getting this thing because it's going to let you kind of test out the waters before jumping into the main project. And because soldering is so important to this project, we're going to do a quick two-minute soldering tutorial in this video using this board before we dive into the actual assembly. You can skip that down below if you already know how to solder. Okay, soldering 101. Any old soldering iron will work for this project. This one here on Amazon is only 15 bucks and it comes with everything you need. You're going to need some solder, you'll need an iron. I have a fancy one here, but the concept is literally identical no matter what one you have. And some flux. I have mine in a little syringe here. It also can come in a little tub. Flux basically makes it so the solder will stick better to the solder joints. It'll make the metal stick to the metal better and crucially make it so the solder doesn't stick to itself and cause a big mess. For projects like this where we're soldering a bunch of pins really close together, flux is going to be almost required. And again, that Amazon listing I had does include flux in the kit for like 15 bucks. And then when we were looking at the screens, I mentioned how they have these straight pins in them. What we're going to do is grab these out of the case and we're going to use these straight pins as the means to solder to our solder practice boards. These aren't used for the project otherwise, so you can recycle them to test out your soldering on the practice board. So here's how I like to solder. First, heat your soldering iron up to 350-ish degrees, doesn't have to be exact. Then you want to place the part you want to solder into its slot, so we're going to place our pins into the solder slot here. Next, we're going to apply some flux onto the solder joints. Again, this is just going to make the solder so much easier to stick to those pins. You'll see here we have the flux nice and saturated. We can wipe all that off after, it doesn't matter. Next, we're going to do something called tinning our iron. That's just putting a teeny little bit of solder on the end of the soldering iron. This is so when we try to put some solder onto the pins, it doesn't just immediately attract to the iron because there's not already some on there. So now when it comes to the actual soldering, here's the part most people mess up. Most people try to like put it on the iron and then put it in. What you're going to want to do is hold your soldering iron on the pin you want to for about two seconds. You want to get that pin itself nice and hot, and instead of the soldering iron melting the solder, you want to feed the solder onto the pin so the pin melts the solder. What you're going to do is just feed that right in to the joint, and what you're looking for is a little teepee of solder to appear around the joint. I'll see if I can get that on camera here. There, you see that even might be a little bit much where it's starting to ball over, but you can be pretty confident that that's a full solder joint. I'm making this look a lot easier than it actually is just because I've had so much practice. But once you really get going, you can really start feeding on the solder. And again, the key here is to go slow. Do little by little until you see that little TP of solder building up, then pull the iron off. Anyway, you're gonna have a whole bunch of chances to practice your soldering here. There's five sets of pins that you could use on this solder practice PCB. Definitely use these to build up your confidence and then we're gonna jump over to the main build. Before we start assembling, you need to decide how you want to assemble the orbs. There's two options. The first is to use these female slots, which make troubleshooting the project infinitely easier. This will allow you to plug in and unplug all your components from your ESP32 to your screens. They're going to plug in nice and easy with these connectors. If you're kind of a beginner in soldering and you're not 100% confident in your joints, do this because it's going to make the project infinitely easier for you to troubleshoot. You can also forgo those female connectors and solder the components directly to the PCB. This creates a slightly cleaner look, but it's not much of a difference. And by having the slots there, it's going to have infinitely levels more flexibility. We're going to be assembling it with the female connectors on the PCB. Just know if you do want to make it a little bit more streamlined and sleek, you can solder the components directly to the PCB. Okay, let's dive in. First step is going to be taking these 90 degree pin connectors and soldering them to the back of the screens. You want them to be looking like this. We're just going to solder that up really quickly here. Should look a little something like this when you got it all soldered up. We're going to do that five times for all of the screens. So we've now got our five screens, all with the 90 pins soldered in. We're going to put those aside and now we're going to grab the PCB. And we're now going to take the female screen connectors and solder those to the top of the PCB. You're going to want to make sure these are going on the side with the logo. So you're going to put these in the holes across the top here and we're going to solder all five of them into these five slots. Again, make sure these are on the top of the PCB. We now have all five connectors soldered to the top of the PCB. We're going to check all of our solder joints, look for those nice little teepees. Those all look great. So now we're ready to move on to the next step. 
We're gonna take these 19 pin connectors for the ESP32 and we're gonna solder them on the bottom side of the PCB. So you're looking for the side of the PCB with the white etching square for the ESP32. The opposite side of the connectors, you're gonna solder two of these, one on this side and one on this side. Like so, we're just gonna do that now. One soldering tip, if you have an awkward part that you kind of can't get to sit right, sometimes it helps just to put one little tack of solder where you want it and it'll kind of sit there comfortably so you could solder it on a nicer surface like I have here. Should look something like this. We're again gonna check over every single one of those joints. One failed joint on all of these pins will make the whole project not work. So you really need to be careful about these ones. Next, we're gonna grab the buttons. These should only fit on one way with the metal feet going towards the outside like this. We're gonna place all three of those on the top of the PCB. So these should be on the same side as the screen connector, the side with the logo. We're gonna slot all three of those buttons into place here. And you know the drill by now, flux up and solder into place. Looking good. Now, lastly, we're gonna grab this USB-C connector. Really important detail about this guy. It's gonna go at the bottom here. This is kind of a last minute addition. This only provides power after you flashed it through the ESP and it's required that you use a USB-A to USB-C cable to plug into this. If you plug this into a USB-C to USB-C power source, it won't power because this thing only needs five volts. You can totally happily power this whole project by the ESP32 only and leave this USB-C port out. I've only included this just because I think it makes for a little bit more of a clean connection once you have it on your desk. So we're gonna solder that thing on now. Just keep in mind, you need a USB-A cable to be able to utilize this port, but you don't necessarily need it for the project. And this is gonna go on the bottom side alongside the ESP32 connector. Flux it up and hit it with some solder. That's all the soldering. Now we're just gonna finish putting it together. We're gonna grab the PCB feet. A really important note about these feet is the tolerance on them is insanely tight to the point where you think they're not actually gonna fit. It was either have them be insanely tight or have the potential of it being really, really loose and not fitting. I would rather them be snug on there than having them be really loose. So you just kind of have to force those on. They will go, it just might take a little bit of finagling. Now we got our stand mounted up. Now we just gotta plug everything in. The ESP crucially is gonna have the USB port facing inside. Make sure you follow the printing on the PCB and the USB port has to be facing in. If you plug this thing with the ESP oriented this way, it will fry the board. So make sure you check and triple check that. It should plug right into the socket. Then we take our screens. One and two and three and four. And five, and just like that, your info orbs are complete. Also a note, if you soldered it up with the female connectors, sometimes if the connector isn't sitting perfectly flush, the screens might be slightly out of whack. You could just put, put some light pressure on them to bend them into place so they align perfectly with all of the other screens. So that's all the hardware done. We're gonna go over to the computer to flash the software now for the big final reveal. So we're here in the computer. I'm gonna be doing this on Mac, but the process is gonna be literally identical for Windows. I'm also gonna rifle through this pretty quickly. If you do get stuck on anything, I'll include some articles down in the description with a little bit more detailed deep dives on how to get all of this stuff set up. So look for those if you're having trouble. Another thing that might throw some of you off, even though this project is built technically in Arduino, we're not gonna be using the Arduino IDE. We're gonna be using something called Platform IO, which lets us flash code to the ESP32 from Visual Studio Code and gives us a few other nice to haves. The main one for this project being it imports all of the libraries and the library settings with the project. You don't need to worry about what that means, but if you might be a little bit confused that we're not using Arduino and that's why. Okay, first step, we need to install some drivers so we can connect to the ESP32. If you've never used an ESP32 before, you'll need to do this. I'll have this link down in the description to where you can find the CP210X drivers. These are the ones you'll need for it. You'll see all of these links here for your appropriate operating system. We'll just download the Mac one here. You'll see that we have the drivers here on our desktop. Installing those is gonna be super easy. Just unzip that file, open that up, you're gonna run the DMG file or it'll be an executable or similar on Windows and then open up the driver installer. You'll just wanna go through the installer here, install that driver and then you'll be ready to move on to the next step. Next up, if you don't have it already, we're gonna install Visual Studio Code. This is a code editor that most of the world uses nowadays to write code. We're gonna download it for our specific operating system here. We're obviously gonna do Mac OS. 
And again, we're gonna open that up off our desktop, unzip it, and then we're gonna run the installer, which is this here. Once you've installed that, open it up and you should see something like this. We're getting really close to being ready to rock here. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go over to this folder on the left here, or this little icon rather, called the and then search for platform, P-L-A-T, and you'll see platform IO show up in the top left here. You're gonna wanna click install on that. That's gonna install the plugin. You don't need to do anything else, but now what you should see is this little bug here showing up on the left. You wanna click into that, it's gonna initialize it, uh, and you'll then be able to click this little house at the bottom left here, little tiny house, click on that, and it should open up this screen. This means you're ready to rock and ready to start flashing your ESP32. To do that, we're gonna jump over to GitHub. Again, I'll have the link to this in the description to the InfoOrbs GitHub, and we're gonna to need to download all of the code for InfoOrbs. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. If you're a developer, you probably know how to do it in the ways that aren't this. If you're not a developer, what you're gonna do is click on this little code thing at the top right here, big green button, and click download zip. That's gonna download all of the code for the project. Then go ahead and unzip that file you just downloaded and you should get a folder with all of the project's files. We're then gonna go back into Visual Studio Code. So open that up into the platform IO screen that we had before. If you forgot how to get here, you wanna click on the little bug on the left and then the little tiny house at the bottom left and that'll bring up this screen. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can follow along better. You're now gonna to wanna to go to Open Project. Click on this Open Project button here, and you'll then see a file browser pop up. What you wanna do is find that folder that you just downloaded with all of the code for the project. It's gonna be called InfoOrbs Main. We're gonna open that up. You're gonna see a whole bunch of other files. You're gonna to wanna to then click into the InfoOrbs file. So go into the InfoOrbs main, then click on the InfoOrbs file. Once you have that open, you should see something like this, include lib source. Don't click any of those, just click open InfoOrbs here. That's gonna open up. In the left here, in all of these files that you're able to explore around is all of the code for the project. You don't need to worry about really any of it except for one file. So you're gonna to need to go into the lib folder then you're gonna go under config and you're gonna see a file in there called config.h.template. This is the most important part of the project. You need to right click on that and click rename and remove the dot template at the end of config.h. So that file should just be called config.h. Do that and now you'll have this file to scroll around in. This is gonna look scary, it's gonna look like code. If you don't know how to code, that's fine, I'll walk you through it. The only thing that you need to do is edit the things within these green indicators here. This batch of code here is gonna basically let you configure all of the settings for your orbs. And again, I'll zoom in here again. Up here is where you're gonna enter in your Wi-Fi details. So you're gonna enter in your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password. You're gonna put that between the quotes. Another really important thing you're gonna to do is set the time zone that your clock is gonna show up at. So you're gonna put the time zone name in between the quotes here. I have it set to Vancouver, obviously, because that's where I live on the West Coast. If you wanna know exactly what the time zones are that you can't enter, there is a link there that references all the time zones. The next thing you're gonna configure is where you want your weather to show up for. All you need to do is just type your city and state and or province in really simple letters. So here I have Victoria, BC, that will render your weather properly. And then here are the five stocks you wanna track on the stock widget. There's just a few default ones here. You could change these out. You just enter your five separated by commas. The last options down here are a few optional things you can configure. So on this first one here, you can toggle between metric and imperial units for the weather temperature. So you want it to be fair Fahrenheit, you have to comment it out. All that means is putting two slashes in front of the defined weather units and it's gonna to turn the whole line green. If that whole line is green, that means that weather units are gonna be Fahrenheit. If you remove those two slashes, it's gonna be metric. Next is the 24 hour clock. You can toggle this between settings when you have it up and running, but if you want it to be 24 hour by default, you just have to set format 24 hour to true. However, it is false by default. Another option you have here is the AM PM indicator. I'll show an overlay on the screen of what that looks like. It's off by default, uh, but if you want that enabled, you could just set that to true and that will show that AM PM indicator on your clock. And the last one is the second ticking. Again, I'll put a 
overlay on the screen of what that looks like, but there's basically just a little ticker that goes around uh, on, on the middle orb that shows you where you're at as far as seconds go. Once you have that all filled out, you're ready to go. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have your orbs plugged in to the ESP32 and have that plugged into the computer. Then what you're gonna do is click this little checkbox down here at the bottom left. That's gonna compile all the code and put it all together. It's gonna to do this screen here. Hopefully you should see a little success indicator and not in error. If you see an error, read through it. Sometimes it's just you messed something up and removed maybe one of the quotes here. If you do have an error, drop it in the Discord, but it should all compile fine. I'll just fast forward while it's doing this. Now, once you've done that, all you need to do is click this little arrow at the bottom left here and click upload. What it's gonna do is connect to the ESP32 and hopefully upload your code. Sometimes you're running into issues here. If you're looking at this writing, that means you've done it, it's working. Sometimes you'll see errors. I'll talk about some troubleshooting you could do if you're seeing some connectivity errors at the end of this video, but we're uploading the code now. Uh, let's go over it and look at the orbs and see how it looks once it's done uploading. So we just finished uploading, it's connecting to Wi-Fi, it's loading data. Once we get this far, we're usually up and running and ready to rock. E the suspense, and there we go. Our info orbs are ready to rock and roll. And that's it, your info orbs should now be up and running. There may be some small variations in the software flashing process. I'll do my best to update those down in the description if that changes and we roll out any major updates. Also follow along with the GitHub for anything that you might see a little bit different. You should find any updates there, of course, the Discord. If you do have any problems with assembly at all, head over to the support channel there because we'll be here to help you. But here's a few simple troubleshooting steps for some of the common problems that people run into. First off, a lot of people have trouble flashing the ESP. They can be a little bit finicky where you can't really get it to connect to your computer. If you're having that problem, the first thing I'd recommend trying is if you have the socket for the ESP, remove the ESP entirely from the PCB and then flash it just as it is. Sometimes having the pins connected to other pads sometimes can cause some issues with the ESP flashing. So totally separating it from the PCB usually will solve that problem. If that doesn't work, or if you soldered your ESP directly to the PCB and you can't remove it, try tapping the boot button as it's flashing. This will manually force it into a boot mode. Sometimes you gotta do this a few times for it to catch at just the right time, but with a combination of pushing that boot button, it should usually flash after five or six tries. And lastly, make sure you're using a good USB-C cable. Try a few different ones if you're having trouble. A bad cable is usually the cause of a lot of flashing problems, and it's having trouble sending consistent data to the ESP32. Now, final tip, if you're having any hardware related problems, maybe you're seeing weird artifacts on the screen, maybe one of the screens just entirely isn't working and it's just not behaving as needed, I can almost promise you 99% of the problems with this thing is gonna be bad solder joints. As you saw, there's a ton of solder joints on this thing and one messed up joint can kind of make the whole thing wonky. Visually inspect every single joint to make sure there's a good connection of solder and even even then sometimes it's not making a good enough connection. Go over all of the joints with your iron, reflow those solder joints and make sure they have a good connection. We've had a whole bunch of troubleshooting go on in the Discord channel and I can promise you like 95% of the times it's just a bad solder joint. Check those joints, make sure they're connected on the screens, make sure they're connected on the ESP and that's probably gonna be your problem. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Being someone who only films short form content, filming like a 15, 20 minute video just seems crazy to me, but I hope you guys found that useful. I'm personally just so excited about this thing, both currently as it is and the future potential. There's so many incredibly smart people working on it. The community is amazing. The widget potential for this thing is crazy, whether it's showing super specific data like your smart home stuff, or maybe like showing sports scores, working as a notification widget, maybe like your Uber Eats tracking. There's just so much that we could do with this thing and I'm so excited to see it grow. Anyway, like I mentioned, all the links related to this thing will be down in the description. If you do decide to buy one of the development kits, first off, thank you for the support and I'm excited to have you as part of the community. Toss me a subscribe, like, follow, all that. I'm really excited to be here on YouTube. And yeah, I'm just pumped about this project. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.